Hey, I heard you guys were not squeamish, which is very good because I want to show you something. Here it is. It is my implant. I'm back from the world of the dead and I have joined the Borg. Okay, this is it in all its glory, the implant for my bone anchored hearing aids. I wanted to show this to you, talk a little bit about the surgery and even show you the device. What you'll see now is you're gonna see a plastic disc here that's called a healing patch. Uh, that's just holding some gauze and stuff in place while this stuff heals. What's what is in the middle that should really take your interest, that's that little piece of metal there. They call that the abutment for the implant. And what that is, it's literally a piece of titanium that is on the outside of my body and goes through my skin and is literally drilled into the bone of my skull. It's literally drilled into my skull about four millimeters. And uh, upon that will be attached a bone anchored hearing aid, an actual electronic device that will amplify sound and conduct it through the bones of my skull to my ear since my ossicular chain is destroyed in my right ear. And that will help me to hear again. So I thought I'd explain how the surgery went, all the fun stuff, and also maybe even show you the device. But there it is, that's the implant. That's the implant portion, and the rest of it is the electronic portion, what they call the sound processor. Okay, so uh, here's how basically the surgery went. Is um, They put me under, it's, it's totally general anesthesia, and it takes about 45 minutes or so. And what they did is they uh, lifted up, um, uh, uh, they lifted up the skin around where this abutment is right now, and uh, cleared out all the subcutaneous tissue. And the reason that they clear out the subcutaneous tissue, that's like the fat and like little kinds of muscles and stuff that are kind of attached to your skull to kind of pat it. They took that out because that actually dampens the sound. Anytime you have something soft. The softer material is uh, when you're putting it up against a, something that's vibrating, a vibrating membrane, membrane, say with one of your instruments, it's going to dampen the sound a lot. So you see guys that put like pillows inside their bass drums, that's to dampen the sound. It's to muffle certain frequencies. So when you remove a lot of that tissue, you allow the, the implant to vibrate more freely, which is going to conduct more frequencies, especially more high frequencies. So those are the ones that uh, tend to get dampened the most. And that's also the frequencies where most of speech is actually contained. Um, you can try this for yourself sometime if you're an audio engineer. You can cut all the frequencies below like even 5k and you'll find that speech is pretty understandable without any of those lower fundamentals sounding at all. Um, Bell, um, of course, Bell Telephone figured this out like 80 or 90 years ago and figured out how to cut bandwidth on voice calls so that you could still understand speech without having to transmit the entire uh, sound spectrum in order to understand somebody's speech. Um, so that's a pretty interesting thing. They did clear away the subcutaneous tissue. So I'll show it to you once we get this healing patch removed and everything, but there'll actually be a dent in my head around this little uh, metal implant. Okay. Um, so lifted that flap up, took out the subcutaneous tissue, drilled a pilot hole into my skull, and then screwed this titanium implant about four millimeters deep into my skull. And I got to wait I have to wait basically 90 days almost for that to get healed enough for me to actually put the um, the sound processor onto the implant and be able to fully use it the way that it is designed to be used. However, I have the sound processor right now, so I thought I'd go ahead and show it to you guys. And I know that unboxing videos on YouTube are pretty much cancer, but this is unboxing something that's a really really rare thing that you'll probably never get to see. And I wanted to give you kind of an updated, you know, a, a detailed look at it. So this is, I guess it's an unboxing video, but not your typical unboxing video because, you know, it's something that's very, very not typical. Um, the device that I have, and of course my keyboard, because I'm set up for playing music right now, um, that's a great backdrop for this. Um, it's made by Oticon, Oticon Medical. There they are right there. Came in a nice nice pretty orange bag um, from you know from their uh, offices in Sweden. It's made in Sweden. So Oticon Medical, they make hearing aids of different kinds of varieties. Uh, this is their bone anchor hearing system, which is called the Ponto. And uh, so I like that they came in a nice little tote bag. And here in California, we can't use plastic bags anymore. We gotta bring our own bags. So uh, thank you Oticon for giving me a free bag. Um, here's what it looks like. You guys see that? Ooh, the Ponto Plus Power. There it is. Uh, this is a, a bone anchored hearing aid, and I'm just gonna pull the box out for you guys so you can see it um, in all of its glory. It doesn't look like there'd be like $10,000 worth of stuff here, but yeah, it's it's a pretty expensive little device. Um, inside you have our first box, which is just gonna contain some you know instructions, and uh, it also actually has some stuff like, you know, 
um, you know, way that you could buy different colored skins for it and some stickers. I could put, uh, you know, put a monkey, put a monkey on it or like some bamboo or something. It might be fun. Um, so that's, that's what's in that little bit. Um, just some instructions for how to, how to use it. Um, it comes with a, a case, which is this side, but I thought I'd just show you the actual unit. So, uh, there it is. I mean, it's pretty simply packaged. And a nice little just like blister pack. Out it comes. And there it is. Not big at all. And uh, so you can see in my hand it's actually quite a small device. It's not very heavy. Um, on the back you have a little basically little clip and magnet. And what that does is that actually is the part that, um, you know, if I turn back here, it will actually clip on to this part of my head and face downward um, and vibrate that abutment, which will act as a transducer to produce sound in my skull. Um, so if we look really closely at this, we can see um, that there's, you know, they've really designed this to be very small and inconspicuous, which I actually don't care about inconspicuousness at all. Like it just doesn't, I don't, I don't care if there's some kind of stigma attached to the fact that I can't hear, uh, it just doesn't matter to me. But there's two very small holes. And let me see if I can really bring that close to you guys. It's kind of hard to see at the focus. There's two very small holes. And those are the microphones. There's one in the front and one in the back, um, which are, you know, go through an uh, you know, analog to digital converter, get processed by a very small computer inside, and then get uh, converted back into an analog signal on this end um, that attaches to the implant and gives you basically like a speaker sound, but in your skull. Um, there's a, a little bit of a battery compartment here. This flips up. There's a tool that's included in the box to help you change the battery. Um, on the outside, there's there's only really two things that you use to operate this. There is a, um, a button, which is on the top, and that's just like to put it on standby or mute it. Um, you could also see it a little bit right here. It's kind of hard to see. Um, so there's a, there's a button on top to mute it, and then there's also this little dial here. There's a very small dial that you can see, and it's kind of hard to operate, but it just uh, goes up and down, and that just turns the volume up and down. So if you want to turn down the volume in a situation, you can just roll that up and down, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And then the last little piece on the bit there, this is a very, very, very small four-pin data port, and you need a specialized version of software to program this. You can program a couple of different hearing aid type programs, depending on what frequency loss, um, what sort of losses and what frequencies you have um, at, in whatever ear this might be attached to. So if you're if you're deaf or you're especially hard of hearing in like the 15K range, you could uh, have a, you know, have your audiologist program this to amplify a 15K range, especially so you can hear that definitive part of speech or whatever you need to do. Again, for most people, hearing aids are about speech. I'm a musician, so it's not just about speech for me. It's about fidelity, being able to hear what I'm actually doing as a musician. That's pretty important, but there it is. Um, that is the super expensive uh, processor that goes on that little implant. Very small, very inconspicuous, and I think they're coming out with a new one next year. It's made by Oticon Medical. I'm gonna put it back in its little case, so I'm not gonna lose it any time. Um, now, it's, what's unfortunate is I can't really use this right away because I have to wait for everything to heal before I start having amplified sound in my skull. Um, so they gave it to me anyway, that's kind of cool. Uh, but it's kind of like, ah, I really like to hear, guys, so. Um, Next is just a little, um, just a little carrying case, you know, a little hard case that you can use to carry this, um, carry this guy around in, um, that can hold some, hold some other stuff, batteries or whatever you need. Um, pretty cool. There it is. A little compact doodad. And then there's a couple of accessories that comes through this as well. One of them is actually a very specialized screwdriver for changing the batteries. And yes, it comes with the batteries, which is great. Batteries included. And for like however many thousands of dollars this costs, um, it better be included. Uh, but you have this little device here. It's a magnet on one end of the screwdriver and the other end is a screwdriver that's exactly the size you need to change the change the batteries for this and then the batteries um, themselves. And I, I don't know how long those six batteries will last, but hopefully a good long time. Uh, hopefully they designed it so batteries last them a nice, decent chunk of time. And then lastly, you have a couple of accessories here, including one of those little, um, 
one of these little skins here um, that I don't know you could do something with, put a sticker on it. And this little thing is actually pretty cool, this black thing. Uh, that's something that you can actually use to clip the processor onto to test it out or to allow, um, you know, allow your family to hear what it sounds like. So let me show that to you and then I can probably just show you how the processor actually attaches. So there it is. And the way this works is that um, you clip the processor onto this little plastic black piece here and uh, then you just touch it, you know, touch it to your head and then you can more or less hear what it's going to sound like. I haven't put batteries in this yet, so um, I'll probably test it out soonish to make sure it works. Uh, then otherwise I'm not going to mess too much with it. Um, so let's see if you can see how this works. Just clips on, should clip on just like that. There it goes. So it clips on and uh, then you can put that up to your head, put on like your temple and you can hear pretty much what it sounds like. Conduction, conduction hearing aid, pretty cool. So that's pretty useful for, you know, testing it out. So I'll probably use that to test it out. And some little stuff to make sure that I don't lose it, a little clip so it goes on your shirt. If you're like at Disneyland, it won't fly off and you lose, you know, your cybernetic implant. So anyway, I thought I'd go ahead and show all of that yummy stuff to you guys. Um, I really appreciate the well wishes from the last video. I am doing fine. Um, let me tell you, going under general anesthesia, I've had like 20 surgeries. It's never that fun. It's always like a five day hangover for me. Um, you know, I still don't feel like quite right. And because, you know, there was stuff with my ear in there, you get like some dizziness and nausea. It's, it's never very fun to have surgery, but I'm doing okay. And I expect to be able to get back to work soon. It's been a big sort of check on my ego to be able to um, stop and, you know, take it easy for a couple days because I'm usually like a big time workaholic. Um, so to just stop and not have to do a lot of work for a bunch of days, that was kind of hard for me, but I'll, uh, I'll be doing okay. So I really appreciate it. Um, thank you guys for watching. This is the uh, Oticon Ponto Plus Power, um, the bone anchored hearing aid system uh, from Sweden. And uh, in case you were wondering about all the details for that, you have them. If you're somebody with conductive hearing loss, uh, hopefully that will be informative to you. If you can hear me, hopefully you can hear me. Um, so have a good one and I will see you guys next time.